Good day YouTube, I'm JD Cooper. This is my video overhauling the Ingersoll Rand 2135 Tiny Max impact wrench. The ammo broke on my impact and since it's going on six years old, I decided to just complete do a complete overhaul. I will be using two kits in this video. The part number for the kits is in the description. One kit is an anvil and hammer kit and the other is a tune-up kit with bearing gaskets and O-rings. Here's my new anvil, and here's my old one. Just pull out the hammer pins and your hammers will fall right out. Pull out the cylinder out of the housing. Button operation, operating the reverse valve, the round cylinder there. Removing the motor gasket, it just slides right out. This is in, removing the inlet bushing. You got two clips on either side of the handle. Clamp it in the vise on the hex and not the washer. Using the screwdriver push in one clip on one side, pull and hold. Then switch over and do the other, push in on the other clip on the other side of the handle. You may have to work at it, it'll just slip out, then you just yank it off. Removing the trigger, it just pulls straight out. You have to remove the inlet bushing first to remove the trigger. This is disassembly of the inlet bushing. If you're doing just a throttle valve kit, this is where you could just use the uh, kit to replace, rebuild your inlet bushing. Removing a snap ring, that's what holds the internal components of the throttle valve. That's the seat support for the valve seat. Now removing the valve seat. then the throttle valve and then there's a spring under those two. After clean up or re-lube, reassemble. First goes in the spring, then the throttle valve,
and stack on your valve seat and seat support on top of your throttle valve. Just press that in. It should hold in place to be able to put your snap ring back on. Ensure your snap ring is set in the groove. Wouldn't want it to come apart on you. All the parts for this inland bushing kit, it comes with the, uh, the full tune-up kit. New O-ring. I'm just using air tool on all of these reassemblies for the inland bushing and the cylinder. New washer. And the last one is the inland bushing clip. It's what holds the whole assembly in the uh, handle of the housing. Remove these buttons, the screwdriver goes in this inside. You have to wiggle around and mess with it, but to try to release the, uh, the tooth there on the inside of the button. After removing the other one, you can press the re reverse valve down through the handle. It will not come up through it, it can get stuck. Press it down, you see two pointed dog ears on the bottom blue o-ring on the bottom, black on top, they are Pacific, and the reverse valve is to uh, be reinstalled the same way, or it will not work. New O-rings. All the plastic parts, the buttons, reverse valves, the housing, everything that's being reused, I've cleaned with just mild dish soap. Probably not a good idea to use solvent on these plastic pieces. All the metal components I use in uh, parts cleaner. Remember, blue o-ring on the bottom, black on the top. Dog ears pointed down. Press that in until it's even with the bottom of the housing inside. Don't press too far up, the top black gas o-ring can uh, pop up. Very hard to get back down in there. All right, this is your trigger. Get a new, got a new o-ring to put on your trigger. And then just slip it into the housing. Note the orientation of your reverse valve that tab pointed to the uh, one side or the other, the dog ears to touch the trigger. If it's pointed to the left as seen here, 
you're gonna put in the right button. If it's pointed to the right, you put in the left button. Now when it's pointed to the right, we're putting in the left button. This process is just to ensure the reverse valve is oriented and ori orientated to the right direction of the uh, buttons that you're using for reverse or forward. You wouldn't want to get them backwards. Pull your trigger halfway out. This is for the stem of the throttle valve to slip through the hook at the end of the trigger there. Just line up your inlet clip on your bushing there and slide it in. You may have to wiggle it a little bit. Make sure your trigger is still pulled out. And then check that your trigger is pressing against the throttle valve stem. Once you can feel that, just clip it in. Now on to the cylinder. This is the power regulator selector. Got a new O-ring for that. Removing the snap ring that holds the rotor onto the housing and the bearing. The other end of the rotor is stuck through the bearing and the end cap. That end cap is, I believe, a composite material of some sort. I wouldn't want to drop it for fear of it breaking. And then just push your rotor out of that bearing. And pop that bearing out of the end cap there. I already, I didn't get a video on that. This is the new motor gasket. Got a little grooves in the gasket and just slide it into the housing lip there. I use a 90 degree pick to uh, work this bearing out. It, it is an interference fit so You'd have to work one side or the other without binding it. It'll be very hard to get out if you bind it. It was a little difficult to get it out. I believe I binded it a little bit. The other bearing in the end cap comes out a little easier than this one. This is the part number for new veins, if you want to just replace veins in your cylinder. New bearing for the cylinder housing. Again, this is an uh, interference fit. Press on one side or the, and the other just a little bit at a time. Work your way around it, working the bearing into the into the fit. Pulling your rotor for reassembly.
new snap ring for the rotor. Ensure your snap ring is in the groove. You may have to uh, use the hammer case cage on the other end of the rotor to hold it so you can see that if it's a uh, metal turn the snap ring in the groove. Reassembly of the regulator knob is straightforward. Put the little tooth in the, uh, in the indents on the side there. Your O-ring will stick up. It seals against the housing. There's a notch in the cylinder housing and another raised notch in the impact housing. Just line them up and slip it in. Oil all your new veins. Straight side faces out toward the house, inner housing surface, just like the one in there. Have four notches on that end plate. Line them up with the notches on the housing. That's where your screws will slide through. And got another new bearing. This hammer case cage, if for some reason it's broken, that is not part of the uh, anvil hammer kit. The anvil hammer kit gives you a new hammer, two new hammers, an anvil, and two new pins. It also comes with a tube of grease in the hammer kit and the tune up kit if you do not have a tub of grease like I have. These are your hammers. You definitely want grease on these. These are doing all the work. Notice the shape of the inner hole of the hammers. You want them 180 degrees opposite of each other when stacking them in the cage. You don't want them to match. Grease your pins up. 
slide them in down through the indents on the side of the hammers. Grease your anvil. You want some of that grease on the back part of those uh, anvil where the hammers are always hitting during the impacts. New hammer case gasket. There's a raised portion on the gasket. Just line that up with the part on the on the hammer case. Reassemble, tighten down. If you like this video or want to subscribe, please do so. Thanks for watching it. See you later.